homes, Lord. Father, I pray, oh God, that may you be able, Lord, to use me, oh Father, to say something that shall be a blessing, Father, to your children. We thank you, my Lord and Savior, for these times, Lord, when you can allow us, oh Father, to sober ourselves, to sober our minds, our thinking, Lord, Father, that you at this moment, oh God, become more important and essential above all things. Our desire, Father, is to tap, oh Father, into your presence, oh God, that not only in this present time, oh God, but throughout the rest of our life, Lord, our work, Father, our occupation, Lord, every affair of our life, oh God, be influenced, oh Father, by thee, oh God. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, where our minds are not wandering, Lord, being preoccupied by the cares of this world, Lord, but Father, just to focus on thee. May you equip us, Lord. I pray, oh God, may we grow, Lord. May we feed from your presence, Lord. May we draw, Lord, from thee, oh God. And I pray, oh God, that after all this has been done, oh Lord, Father, we can come out, oh Father, more mature, more connected with thee, oh Lord, oh Father, even in a better relationship with you. I thank you, Father, for the songs that have been sung, Lord. Thank you for the unity of the brethren, Lord, the cooperation that has gone into it, Lord. I thank you, Jehovah, oh Father, for the friendship, Lord, that you have given us, Lord, with the brothers, oh Lord, in Dublin and all the brothers all over, oh God, that have able to connect with us to this morning. I bless your holy name. I glorify thee. Be with me now, Lord, I pray, oh God. Have your own way, Father, as I surrender, Lord, my being to you. Let the end of the glory be given to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God richly bless you, saints of the living God. I want to appreciate Pastor Andrew for this uh, time uh, that uh, he has allowed us or he, uh, he made it possible and organized that we can have fellowship together with the brothers in, in, uh, in, in Dublin. Um, it's very wonderful uh, to see all the, the saints in, in Dublin. Uh, I think, you know, uh, it's, uh, it fulfills our understanding that our fellowship, even in heaven, it shall be, you know, we will desire fellowship. And when you desire fellowship, you will travel like this in a speed of a thought to a fellowship with the brothers. I think that's exactly <laughs> what is happening here. Oh, Though yeah. it's not happening um, uh, physically, but uh, we are able to connect with the speed of a thought. Amen. Amen. No, so we, we bless and we glorify the Lord. Amen. And I want to appreciate all the brothers and uh, from Nottingham as well that have uh, supported and uh, that have been joining in. I did not want uh, to break the flow of things from last week. So um, having enjoyed the Sunday school um, last week, I just thought maybe it would be nice to continue uh, with that, um, with, the, with the brother's inspiration. Uh, many people really spoke highly about uh, that uh, Sunday school last week and even this morning. And then uh, with the message that Pastor Andrew brought on the shepherd, my, 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 my. I heard many people, you know, speak about that in the testimonies that came after that. Amen. Um, we here in Nottingham, uh, we went on to listen to the message, uh, the shepherd, uh, of the sheepfold. So, you know, it was such a blessing. One brother uh, was so blessed. He's not a member of a fellowship, but he joined and I'm sure he's joining in. He said, you know, after that service, you know, he was, he, he went to work, I think the following day and uh, he, he just put on a table randomly, you know, in, in his car to listen to. And that's this message that actually came up, you know, and that was uh, just God's way of confirming. So, uh, that's on the spiritual side. On the natural side, I say that puts me under pressure. Amen. <laughs> but I just pray that God will be able to uh, will allow me to say something that will be a blessing to his children. Amen. Uh, I don't want to divert so much from that inspiration last week. Uh, and I'm going to talk of um, uh, another relationship, not this time of a relationship between uh, a shepherd and the sheep, but a relationship between the father and the son. Uh -huh. Amen. Because um, I believe that as Christians, at times um, we lo lose focus on our emphasis, amen, on why we are Christians. Hallelujah. Why are we Christians? You know, some of us, we have left, you know, we left which doctors where we used to, to move from which doctor to which doctor, depending on which doctor is more powerful than the other. And then we went to the Pentecostals and we wanted to, we're looking for which church or which pastor, or which minister is more spiritual than the other. In all that we're seeking to find who can, where can we get the most benefits, you know. But 
that is not Christianity. When we have now come into Christianity, it's not so much about what are we going to get in, out of Christianity, what benefits, what protection, what money, what prosperity, you know, are we going to acquire in, in Christianity? And it's a, it's a real, real shame that this is where most of us are. Brother Brenham, when he came, you know, he did, in, despite of all the Pentecostal movement that was there and all the, the, the miracles, the signs and wonders that were taking place, Brother Brennan paused and said and prayed the message, why where Pentecost failed? Because in all they're doing and in all those miracles and all those, that, that work, he realized that what is lacking there is a relationship yeah. amen, between the so-called Christians and their God. So where Pentecost failed is when they became born again or when they were, became children, they said, that's it. Whereas what we're supposed to be focusing is growing in that relationship that we can be true sons of God. Amen. Yeah. So when the Bible tells us, amen, that um, um, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, he did not send a king. Hallelujah. Of Amen. all the offices that you could ever think of, he sent the office of a son. He sent the sonship to us. Why? Because he wanted us, hallelujah, to be, the, to be like Jesus. Amen. So when we say we are Christians, we're saying we want to be like Jesus. We want to have the anointing in the Christ that was upon the sonship. Amen. Hallelujah. So then, therefore, whatever I acquire or I don't acquire, whatever I gain or I don't gain, amen, you know, the most emphasis must be on this relationship, hallelujah, the father and his child, the father and his children, amen. So let me just um, um, open a, a scripture, if I may. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to share my screen. Uh, amen. Okay. God richly bless you. Um, okay, amen. I hope you can see that scripture. Amen. Amen. So it says here, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. May God bless the reading of his word. Amen. I just want to kind of like rewind a little bit, you know, and just go to um, emphasize this um, uh, relationship. And that would be the, the, the main uh, theme of my, my, my message. You know, the title, as you can see, is Abba Father. Amen. You know, um, that relationship, you know, between God and his children, it's a relationship that I think is not being emphasized not only by the ministers, but by the individuals, we Christians, in our approach with God. We end up being worried whether our prayers can be heard, whether God is happy with us, you know, you know, whether I'm doing enough to please God, you know, whether, you know, what I'm doing, you know, it, it can qualify me to go into, to get into the rapture, or am I going to be, to be left behind, or, you know, all those questions, you know, if we are children of God, those questions should never bother us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the relationship between God and his children are unconditional. Amen. 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 Now, if we can just go back, you know, and just have a look, you know, uh, right in the, in, in the beginning, what we find is God created his son, Adam. Brother Branham says Adam was God's first son. Now, in that relationship, God and Adam Oh, hallelujah, amen. It was an unconditional relationship. Hallelujah. The first thing that we realize, amen, is that Adam, amen, was working hand in hand in glove with God. They were working together, amen. It's amen. God and his son, amen. And the relationship between Adam and God was not based on other relationships. Do you know that we as times at times as Christians, we are no, we are more conscious about what other people are saying, what other people view our spirituality, our uh, people view our, our, our conditions, but the, the relationship between Adam and God was not influenced, was not affected. It was only after the fall that Adam himself brought in, hallelujah, the issue that I sinned, this, I sinned because of the wife that gave me. 
But before the fall, that there was none, that condition was irrelevant. Other people were not relevant in that relationship. Amen. Let me just proceed, amen, and say, Adam is, we've said that he was a co-worker with God. Remember, God came to a point where he said, let me, Adam, I want you to, to call these animals, give them names. And the Bible tells us that the names that Adam gave are the names, hallelujah, that were in the mind of God. Amen. We are beginning to see, hallelujah, the first relationship between the father and the son. Why this message or this thought is so important to me is, you know, as we found out last week that there's a lot of sheep that are without shepherds. There is many, many, many children that are without a father. And that is spiritually speaking. Amen. Brother uh, Agri, you know, he did mention something to me just a few weeks ago and it really stuck with me. We're just fellowshipping in the house and he says it is easier for a father not to have a son than for a son not to have a father. Amen. Amen. I thought, wow, 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 wow. You know, I've been yeah. thinking about this statement, you know, ever since he mentioned that, you know, it really stuck with me. And I'm trying, I was trying to apply it spiritually that mm -hmm. most of us, most of us as Christians, we are Christians, we are baptized, we are born again, hallelujah. But do we actually have the relationship mm -hmm. of a father with God? Amen. Or to us, God is just a creator and God is there, you know, he's, a, he's an errand boy. When I need healing, when I need a job, when, I, when, when I've got problems in my marriage, when my children are sick, you know, therefore I need God. God is going to help me. God is going to protect me. Mm -hmm. But this message of the hour, Brother Brigham says, I came to build individuals. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. So if it is an individual, hallelujah, an individual Amen. is a relationship. It's not there for a religion. Mm. That's right. Amen. Amen. If God can, can, can help us to focus on that understanding, amen, that God the Father seeketh, hallelujah, amen, amen. not a king, amen. but the Father seeketh, amen, those who worship him in spirit and in truth, it is the office of a father that is seeking children, hallelujah, amen, amen. that will worship him in truth and in spirit. Now, so what broke that father son a relationship that was in the garden of eden we know brother brenham says amen when sin came hallelujah mm. the first thing that we find amen is adam and eve were overwhelmed with fear mm. is that not what happens to you and me my brother my sister when we don't feel that relationship when we are drifting away from the father child relationship yeah. And when this is happening like Corona, we are afraid. Mm. Is it not because of the absence of that relationship? Mm. If God is our protector, if God, hallelujah, is our Amen. father. Amen. Amen. We should never be afraid. Adam was never afraid until sin kept, came in. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know, my brother, my sister, even right now, you know, the people that are in the world, they are panicking. They are afraid because they don't have that relationship. Uh, and I'm saying to you, my brother, my sister, if you are in the message, if you're a child of God, and you believe, hallelujah, you are a daughter or a son of God, and you are afraid of the pestilence, and you are afraid, hallelujah, of the evil that can come by night, if you are evil, afraid of the circumstances of how things can go wrong about losing a job, hallelujah, all I'm saying is, let us examine our relationship with the Father. Amen. Amen. Because if we have that relationship with the Father, Amen. Mm -hmm. We are secure, Amen. My, my our Father knows. As the Bible says, you know, unless our faith is that uh, uh, like that of a child, Amen. Mm -hmm. A child does not need to worry, Amen. You, know, you might be walking in town and somebody shouting, amen. If you're holding your child, the child only looks at you to say, daddy, you know, what are you going to do about it? The child is not panicking. He's only looking to the father. Amen. 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 But when we are living in a world, amen, where everything that we do, we have got to work for, we've got to labor for, we've got to pay for. It seems as if even some of the protection that we need from God, the favor that we need from God, we've got to work for it. And the times we find we are inadequate. But we are, not, no longer, we are no longer operating as the father and the son. We are now working as if there is a certain relationship that requires us to qualify. But let me tell you, brother, my brother, sister, on the cross of Calvary, brother, brother, the reason why Jesus Christ came 
Mm. He came so that we can be sons. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He Amen. came to restore. Hallelujah. That relationship. You might say, oh, well, I thought Jesus Christ came to die for us. But let me tell you, there is several quotations where the prophet emphasizes, even in the book of Romans, amen, where the Bible is telling us that, you know, we were made sons, hallelujah, by Calvary, by the coming of the son of Jesus Christ, amen. the son of God. That made us have a relationship with the father. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Let me just proceed, amen, and uh, read uh, the, the, the next um, um, the next uh, slide, if I, I may. Um, just uh, bear with me. Uh, and if I'm here, okay, there we go. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be. As we know uh, what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Amen. 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 For we shall see him as he is. I'm going to go to the next one. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, mm -hmm. made under the law. Amen. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Oh, and because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts. Ah, 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 ah. Because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts. So Jesus Christ is the perfect example, amen, of how, how our relationship ought to be, hallelujah, with our God. Amen. In every circumstance, whether it was Jesus Christ, hallelujah, you know, the way people looked at him, that's how people are supposed to look at us, amen. The way, amen, Jesus Christ dealt with the sinners, with the publicans, hallelujah, with the way when Jesus Christ was in trials, a son in trial, how did he respond? How did he act? What was his attitude? Did this dent his relationship with God? No, sir, amen. Mm -hmm. But when we are panicking, when we become afraid, amen, when we seem to be losing things, things are, uh, are getting out of control. Hallelujah. That's when we need to go back, amen, and examine that relationship. It's very, very unfortunate. And you'll be surprised, hallelujah, how many times, hallelujah, we can grasp the concepts of the message, the quotations, and, uh, and, the, and, and the doctrines and the teachings, but lose that relationship. Amen. And by us not coming to, to, to a full realization of the importance of that relationship, hallelujah, Amen. Amen. we forfeit ourselves many, many privileges. <coughs> All right, okay. I'm going to continue. It says, wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son. Oh, my brother, my sister. You don't have to do certain things in order to impress God. Mm -hmm. Brother Brenham says, hallelujah, amen. I don't go to church on a Sunday to please God, but I so much appreciated the love that he, he has for me, what he did for me, that I have to go to church. Amen. Stop sinning because I'm scared to go to hell. Hallelujah. But I do, I, I don't commit sin, I don't indulge in the things of the world because of the love that I have for him, because of what he did for me. Amen. Oh, but some of us think if we go to church, you know, for five Sundays, I think, hey, my, you know, I, I, I've scored enough points. <laughs> that, that, that's not Christianity, my brother, my sister. You know, if you listen to, to, to five, seven tips a, a, a week, you think, ah, you know, I've been very spiritual this week. To who? <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing that to tick a box? Are you doing that to register to yourself? That's why Jesus Christ, as far as his spirituality, in his relationship with the Father, he says, I receive no commendation from men. I'm not going to put marks on myself, neither am I going to accept marks from other people. Hallelujah. My commendation comes from my Father. Amen. If we as children of God could be focused on that, that there's nobody that we need to impress, neither ourselves nor uh, uh, other people, but we need, hallelujah, to be in a relationship. If God is so happy with us, hallelujah, that's enough for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, it goes on, for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. 
Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. A child of God in that relationship does not need to fear. Am I saying things, bad things are not going to happen? Bad things are going to happen. Things are not going to go the way you expect. Things are not going to go the way you plan. Amen. But we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Okay. I'm going to just going to read here somebody, you know, just a commentary on uh, what does it mean? Hallelujah. That God is our other father. It says in the scriptures, there are many different names used to describe God. Mm. While all the names of God are important in many ways, the name Abba Father is one of the most significant names of God in understanding how he relates to his people. The word Abba is an Aramaic word that means father. It was a common term that expressed affection mm. and confidence and trust. Mm -hmm. Abba signifies the close, intimate relationship of a father and his child, as well as the childlike trust that a young child puts in his daddy. Mm -hmm. Oh, my, my, my. Let me tell you, you know, when, when a child has got trust in his dad, but you know what we do? You know, we need God when it's necessary. That's not Christianity. That's not a relationship with, with that's not the time to remember God. No, 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 no. You know? Because there are times when we don't really feel we need God, you know, when we are finding our ways and, you know, we, we find we, good jobs are coming our way, monies are coming our way, opportunities are coming our way. But look at the relationship that God had with, uh, with David. David, hallelujah, knew his maker. He knew him as a father right from the time yeah. when he was shepherd boy. He knew that the battles that he was fighting, amen, were not his battles, hallelujah. When the nation of Israel were bound by fear, it was David who says, this is not my battle, it is the Lord's battle. Amen. amen. That is the understanding that David had all the way in his life. There are times when David would go and pray to the to God and say, shall I go to battle with the, you know, with this nation or with these people, with Ramoth and Gilead? And God would say yes or no, you know. And you know what? After a month or after some years, you know, David, you know, is confronted by the same enemies. He would go back to God and say, shall I go or not? But some of us, as long as it's an opportunity, hallelujah, there's no need to ask God. But that's how David depended on the word of God. That's right. Amen. Amen. It's like at times, you know, I remember when I was... You know, with uh, Oshay, you know, he was a little boy, you know, he, he, you know, we'd gone to, a, to, to visit a family. And uh, in this family, you know, the, 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 you know he, he, this family, it was a sister who ended uh, Oshay had something to eat. And Oshay looked at me to, to, for approval, to, shall I get it? You know, shall, shall I receive it? Shall I accept that? You know, you wanted it, but you had to look to the father. Shall I get it? But you know what? We are, some of us are not like that as long as it's an opportunity. Hallelujah. That is come my way. It doesn't matter. You know, you know, I, as, I'm going to indulge. I'm going to eat. I'm going to take advantage of it. If some people have now coined some new faces that are not even in the Bible. If the Lord gives, shall I not receive? Shall I not receive? <laughs> <laughs> yes, my brother, my brother, my sister, you know, if we are depending on God, hallelujah, we don't have to indulge on everything. As I have spoken before in Nottingham, and I say not every door that is opened, you need to walk in it. Not every door that is open. That's right. That's right. And I went on to say, not every door that is opened by God. Amen. <laughs> we don't <laughs> There were doors, hallelujah, that even David was given to say, you know, it was an opportunity for David to kill Saul. Mm. God allowed that. God permitted that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But David, hallelujah, in his relationship, he knew that, but my father says, my father says, hallelujah, thou shalt not touch the Lord's anointed. Mm. Amen. That's the really when God, when the Bible now tells us that uh, you know God says, "A man after mine own heart," David, it's because David understood that relationship between him and his father. He depended on God. Hallelujah. He relied on God on everything. Amen. He never. Consumed 
consumed opportunities to his own uh, to his own last. Nay, that did he take advantage when he could have killed Shimei, when he could have done things? He didn't do that because of his fear for God. Amen. 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 May God help us. Amen. 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 It is said, Hallelujah. David was a shepherd. David was a king. David was a warrior. David was a sinner. David was an outlaw. David was a man of praise. David was a man of faith. But above all, David was a child of God. Amen. That's what I believe we ought to be. That regardless of what happens, my brother, my sister, whether it's an office in the church, whether it's a, you know, a, a, an office at work, regardless of what happens, the bottom line is we are God's children. Amen. 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 Let me just continue now and show what he says here. Uh, that's the prophet says, he brought us back to the eternal fellowship, relationship, amen, to amen. God, to be sons yeah. and daughters again, to restore back all that Adam lost. Oh my, hallelujah. In the father. Mm -hmm. Oh my, my, my. Yeah. So I'm trying to use too many here, but uh, so that I can, okay. Uh, now the thing of it is since, uh, I don't know whether, yeah, okay. Um, sorry, just bear with me. Okay, uh, that Adam lost in the fall. Now the thing of it is since he has restored man back to his place, man in the fall has lost his conscious of what father put here on earth to do. Amen. I'm very intrigued on why the term father keep, keep, keeps on being used. Because we just times we use, just use it as a title, but you know, father is actually signifies a relationship. Mm. John is the one that articulates that, that, that relationship between God and Jesus very well. Amen. Out of interest, I looked, the word father is used in the book of John as many times as it was used in the book of Matthew, Mark, and Luke put together. Amen. John understood that relationship. That's why he understood and went on to write about love. Amen. Because mm -hmm. it's about an unconditional. And when you go into, the, into, into those uh, uh, books of uh, First John, Second John, you know, he, he's, he keeps on talking about little children, little children, mm -hmm. little children, because he really grasped that relationship. No wonder why, amen, <laughs> he was the beloved disciple. Hallelujah, amen. Okay. Let me just continue here. Here the commentary says, um, Abba signifies the close intimate relationship of a father and his child as well as the child like trust that a young child puts in his daddy. Mm. Abba is always followed by the word father in the, in the scriptures. Yes. And the phrase is found in three passages. Obviously, Mark chapter 14, Romans chapter 8, and in Galatians. Okay. Many people claim that all people are children of God. But the Bible reveals quite a different truth. We are all his creations Amen. and under his authority and lordship and all will be judged by him. But the right to be a child of God and call him Abba Father is something that only born again Christians have. Amen. <laughs> when we are born again, we are adopted into the family of God, redeemed from the curse of sin and made heirs of God. Part of that new relationship is that God now deals with us differently as a family. Mm -hmm. Now, he goes on to say, it is life-changing to understand what it means to be able to call, to be called. <laughs> Sorry. It is life-changing to understand what it means to be able to call the one true God our Father. Yeah. And what it means to be joint heirs with Christ. Because our relationship with our other Father, He no longer deals with us as enemies. Instead, we can approach Him with boldness and in full assurance of faith. The Holy Spirit testifies 
we, we, with our spirit that we are God's children. Mm. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. I said that was a very precise uh, description of what it means when we say Abba Father. Amen. Mm. Brother Brenham says, in other words, hallelujah, referring to that, what, had, what, what was lost in that relationship between Adam and Eve, in their relationship with God, he says, in other words, all of the plumbing as it was yeah. um, um, in our brain, it, the outlets, the faith um, has been clogged up with the business affairs, with the home and domestic things. It has all become clogged. Uh, sorry. Uh, it has all become clogged. Uh, sorry. Um, it has all become so clogged, clogged up with, until God can't operate through those channels that he made a man for. Amen. Our understanding of that relationship from the fall in the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. Amen. Our understanding is now clogged up. Our faith, amen, clogged up with what? With the business affairs, with the home life, with the domestic things. And I'm just trying to say, as children of God, in this message of the hour, we need to sober up. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to come back, hallelujah, to seek to establish this relationship that was paid for on the cross of Calvary. Amen. That's why he was tempted in all points as a son. So we as children of God, hallelujah, mm -hmm. when we are tempted, he can understand us. There is nothing that Jesus, the son, did not go through, hallelujah, that we, are going, we, that we, we end up go, going through as children of God. Therefore, amen, we have, that's why he says we are co-heirs with Christ because him being the son of God, the spirit of Christ has been poured in us, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Mm. And because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. He goes on. Hallelujah. Amen. But Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing in himself, mm. but what you see the father do, what things Amen. soever you doeth, these also doeth the son likewise. Amen. Mm. We should never do anything without seeking God. But you know what, my brother, my sister? Mm. You know, at times we don't have confidence simply because that relationship is lacking. Yeah. Mm. Amen. We take advantage of an opportunity as long as it's there. It's, an, it's a chance given. We are not going to wait for this chance to go in case it will never come again or such an opportunity will never arise again because we don't have confidence with the Father. We don't have uh -huh. confidence in our relationship. But if you're a child of God, opportunities can go, can come, and you can actually let them go past. Amen. If you can feel that God is not actually in this opportunity, amen, because you are confident, hallelujah, that your father is the better thing for you. Hallelujah. Amen. We cannot act like the people of the world. We cannot behave like the people of the world, amen. When people don't acknowledge us, we are angry, hallelujah. We call them racist, we call them tribalists and everything like that, <laughs> because we are disappointed, because we are focusing to receive recognition again. Oh, my brother, my sister, but let me tell you, if we have a relationship with the Father, you don't worry. You don't care what people say about you. Amen. Amen. In fact, the Bible says, when a man's ways please the Lord, mm. God makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Oh, amen. 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 I, if we, can we become Christians to such an extent that even if people might not like my dressing, might not like my cooking, but if there's one thing they can acknowledge is that I love God. Amen. Oh, my brother, my sister, amen. If it be, you know, for example, amen, demons acknowledged that that was the son of God. Those were demons, they could not doubt, they could not question that. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, amen. So when he was demon possessed, could actually tell and could actually say that hey, 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 there was something special about David. You might not like somebody because you're in a in a competition with them, but if you can only acknowledge and see the relationship that that person has with the father, mm -hmm. 
That's why I think at times we don't respect one another. Amen. Because we fail to see that. But don't worry, my brother, my sister. Amen. You live a Christian life that people mm. might under, not understand you. Hallelujah. They might not maybe appreciate maybe the car you drive or the house you live in. But if there's one thing they must be able to see is that you are in a relationship with God. Amen. That you love God. That can never be doubted. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let me just continue. He says, Amen. Then Jesus said unto them, Very like say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself. Uh, the son can do it. Brother Branham says, The son never did anything as long as he was in the office, office of a son. Amen. Yeah. He says, Jesus never performed one miracle in the office of a son. Amen, amen, oh, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is what Brother Branham says. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Because he says, I do nothing except with my, what my father shows me. Amen. He so much depended on God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Brother amen. Branham understood that very well. Amen. Some people you just go and bless. If there's no that says the Lord, there's no that says the Lord. People would put pressure on him. Hallelujah. But he's not compelled. Mm. He was not compelled or moved. There are certain things that you can feel sorry for certain situations, but you still need to wait. Amen. What does mm. the Father say? Amen. Amen. Don't ever become, hallelujah, you know, more, more, more gracious than God. Amen. More merciful than God. That's impossible, my brother. Amen. But the devil, hallelujah, who try to make you believe that he actually understands you better. He can come and offer you things, amen, if thou be the son of God. You know, yeah. do this. But let me tell you, my, my brother, my sister, the devil can op offer you anything, but he can never offer you his life. Amen. Hallelujah. Only God himself. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. This is where the young people at times fail to understand, amen. Because when they come to church, when they sit in church, they don't see maybe things that are appealing. They don't find things, hallelujah, that excited them, amen. They think maybe the world has got something better to offer. Let me tell you, my brother, this world, hallelujah, the devil, the, the, the devil is, the, is, the, is the God of this world. There is nothing out there that the devil can offer you, hallelujah. He can he might offer you things, but the devil can offer, can never offer you himself. Amen. Only God, hallelujah, hallelujah, Amen. loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Why? Amen. Because he loved the world. <sighs> hallelujah. Amen. John 5, 20 says, for the father loveth the son. Oh, who is saying that? Amen. John. Who is saying that for the father loveth the son? Mm. It is Jesus. We had confidence in the love of the Father. Amen. Oh, wonderful. Why do we doubt ourselves? Why is it that we are not aware? We, are, we, are, we doubt that God loves the moment we lose a job. Hallelujah. Because maybe the company says they, they can't afford to, to employ you, to hire you anymore. Amen. We wonder whether God loves them. We look at other people and see them maybe, you know, having found an opportunity, a better job, maybe started a business. And you say, oh, maybe God loves that. But Jesus... He did not have opportunities in this world. Neither did he have a hierarchy or a status. But if there's one thing Jesus, as the son of Amen. God, was, confident, was assured of, without money, with nowhere to lay his head, Jesus had the confidence, hallelujah, that the Father loved him. Amen. 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 Oh, when we doubt the love that God has for us, mm. it Amen. means we're fallen. We are not in tune. Hallelujah. We are no longer in that relationship of a father and a son. Oh. And the father loveth the son and showeth him all things that himself doeth. Mm. Oh, let me tell you, my brother. <laughs> there is many things that God is showing us. Amen. Either through the revealed word, either through your life, but the issue is, are we in a relationship to see what the father is showing us? Mm -hmm. You know, the brother the prophet gave us an example of a mother who was in a supermarket and took a toy and it dangled before the child and the child could not respond. Says the other children would respond, my child, there is something wrong with him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we are quick to give explanations. We are quick to dismiss. Hallelujah. If there is one thing that we should never, never doubt. Amen. 
is God's intentions for us. Amen. You know the scriptures, the thoughts that I have for you are not thoughts of evil, but thoughts of peace that might give you an expected end. But let me tell you, my brother, my sister, there are certain things that happen that God wants to show you in your life, in your situations, in your circumstances. Are you in a relationship where God can actually show? You know, you know, some, some of the times God, you know, gives us dreams. We wake up in the morning, we've forgotten what that dream is. You know why? Because there's many things that is occupying us. There is many voices, hallelujah, that are clogging our mind, the business, hallelujah, of this life, the cares of this life. Amen. Mm. But here the scripture is saying, Amen. Amen. And he will show, he says, the, the father loved the son and he showed him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him great works than these. Amen. Amen. Let me have another um, uh, quotation there. Uh, not that one. Oh, I put there, Jesus does not compete with the Father. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. There are people that try to go to, to, to get more, go, may, 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 more glory than God. Yeah, yeah. Does it ever happen? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Let me tell you, my brother, my sister. There are people that try to put, even preach better than Brother Brenham. They were more following than Brother Brenner. I do not know, you know, why there is such a spirit in this Laodicea of love of self. But remember, it's the second Timothy that says, you know, terrible times, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. But let me tell you, the Bible says, if Jesus, though in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Amen. I remember when I first came to Nottingham, I said, you know, if I'm ever going to be a pastor in Nottingham, I pray that I pray that God just gives me enough sheep for me to pastor. For example, <laughs> you know, if God is appointed that I should pastor five sheep, five people, I don't even want a sixth one. Amen. What am I going to give them? Mm. Where do I get the food for them? If, if that's what God has ordained for me, hallelujah, I don't want anything more than that. Amen. amen, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Remember God says, amen, that's Isaiah 42, 8, I am the Lord, that is my name. My mm. glory I will not give to another, neither my praise, hallelujah, to grave in he goes on to say, for my own sake, even for my own sake, I will do it. For how should my name be polluted and I will not give my glory unto another? Amen. <laughs> amen. amen. Now, when we go back, amen, into the, into, into the life of David, for example, amen, I gave the example of Saul, but I liked, you know, when Abigail, when to speak to David and use this way, these words, that regardless of the fact that her husband, you know, did not do much for David, but Abigail, being spiritual, was able to identify that what, what David was doing was not doing it out of his might, out of his strength, but he was doing it because he loved God. So I know the battles that my master fights. They are not his battles. He fights the Lord's battles. Mm. As I said, I found some Christians, you know, even in, you know, in many places, whom no matter what they do, they have to consider God first in all the affairs. Whether they are, they, they, it's about a promotion, whether it's about a marriage, whether it's about, uh, you know, everything they consider God first. You know, there are some people that actually put their careers above their fellowship with God. That's right, bro. True, they are given an offer, especially in these days on LinkedIn, they are approached and they say, you know, there's a job, you know, in, in, in some place, maybe in, in you know, in, in, in a Virgin Islands, you know, somewhere where they, they don't even care whether there is a message church or not. They don't, they're not even bothered about that. To them, it's an opportunity. Mm. But do you know that your child, whatever they do at the back part of my, their mind, 
Yeah. They know they're the father. If somebody challenges them at school, they actually say that I'll report you to my father. They are so conscious. <laughs> they're not worried whether this other child has got a father. No, I'll report you to my father. <laughs> I wish we could have that confidence. Amen. But when we are overwhelmed by situations, right at the back part, you know, just next to our core, our to our subconscious, you know, mind, we are very aware that God, Hallelujah, is aware. God is in control. God is near. God is 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 ready to listen. Mm-hmm. But in fact, unfortunately, some people is the other way around. Mm-hmm. Should they become overwhelmed? Should mm-hmm. things go wrong? Or should they make a mistake? The first thing that they think is judgment. <laughs> but remember, is it David who was saying, God remembers that we are dust. He knows our frame. He knows our qu- he knows our weaknesses. Not that we should take advantage of it. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. But because we are children, hallelujah. We must therefore tap into that relationship. Hallelujah. He is our father. Remember Adam when he sinned. Also, what came to his mind was judgment in ran away and hid. Then brother, brother, I'm talking about a man running from the presence of God. Yeah. When we are weak, the best thing is to run to God. Yeah. I often say that some people, you know, they do something, you know, they feel condemned in their, in, in, their, in their souls, in their spirits. The next thing, you know, they say that, you know, I don't feel worthy to pray. I don't feel worthy to read the Bible. And I often say that, you know, that is a spirit of pride because there was never a time we ever, when we ever worthy to read the Bible. There was never a time when we ever worthy to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Because your condition, the relationship that you have with the Father is an unconditional relationship. When you have sinned, don't be like Adam. When you have sinned, that's when you need to run to God. Amen. Amen. And cry, Abba, Father. Uh Realizing what Abba, Father means, not only what it means, but actually experiencing that relationship, my brother. Hallelujah. That takes away condemnation. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And that opens other doors of you to be confident, whether you are witnessing, whether you are testifying. The very word that Jesus Christ said, that whosoever heareth my words, you are under the anointing of Christ, and you know that should these people believe the words that you are speaking, they will also be saved. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I can of my own self do nothing. Mm. Amen. Mm. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but mm. the will of the Father which has sent me. Amen. Is that what we do, my brothers and sisters? Do we really seek the will of God in all our affairs? That's the scripture that says, My testimony, but I receive no testimony from men. Mm. But these things I say. That you might be saved. I'm going to finish now by reading uh, the scriptures in, uh, in, in the book of John chapter 17. As I said, John clearly articulates that, um, uh, that relationship between Christ, uh, but, uh, between him and the Father. One thing that I, I would have done, but I, I just realized that I had not time. I went and studied the whole book of John to see how it progressed from the time when Jesus Christ was born, you know, and all the, 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 the ch- chapter by chapter to see that relationship unfolding until, you know, it came to the authority of the son. And then the prayer that is in John chapter 17, verse 1. I'm going to read verse 1 of John chapter 17. I don't have it on the slide there. But here we go. <laughs> These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and says, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. And thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. This is Look at the confidence that Jesus. one might say, you know, but you know, that relationship between God and Jesus, you know, you cannot equate it between us. But let me tell you, that is the reason why Jesus, that's the reason why we are Christians or why we call ourselves Christians. Amen. Hallelujah. 
We should not feel that, you know, yes, you know, we are God's children, but uh, there are certain things. Let me tell you, my brother, everything that was in Christ, he poured it into the church. Amen. If Amen. there's anything that makes you doubt that relationship, hallelujah, then we need to make it right. We need to put it right. Mm. If it's our walk, if it's the meditation of our minds, hallelujah, look at even Jesus Christ's relationship with those that were outside he was never judging and condemning. Look at the way we do and we disfellowship one another and we dismiss, hallelujah, amen. We look at a brother and say that brother is not serious. We, 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 we look down upon the brother. We judge them. But Jesus Christ was not like that as a son. Amen. Amen. Why? Okay, let's read verse 2. As thou have given him power over all flesh. Sorry, verse 3. And this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God, and oh. Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou hast given. Oh. Do. do we, as children of God, ever consider the fact that, number one, the boundaries of your habitation are ordered of the Lord. Do we ever seek to find that in those boundaries are you fulfilling the work that God has asked you or sent you to do? Mm. While we become preoccupied with raising our children, with our marriages, with our professions, but are we really focused on the real important purpose why God sent us here? I always give this example. I remember when I did not have uh, immigration papers, you know, uh, I was a, a, a refugee. And um, um, I, 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 in fact, before I became a refugee, I was an alien. I had no papers here. I was just like a, a, an alien, you know. So um, I went to the home office. The home office said that, uh, you, you know, okay, we're going to uh, find you a, a new place where you can go and, um, and live with your family while we're processing your papers. You know what? You know, I'm not tired of saying this testimony. I pray to the Almighty God. I says, Lord, I don't want to go to another place where my, my daughter, um, uh, that is going to, that will mean me changing school for my daughter. I, I, because that school, I loved it. I thought it was the best school for my daughter. She was doing very well there. And I pray to God. I say, Lord, if you are ever going to allow me to be moved to another city, let it be, let it be that you've got a purpose for me in that place. Amen. Other than that, Lord, please, I beg you, Amen. don't move me from this area. Um, you know what happened? I was so determined that I was not going to be moved from that area. <laughs> Until I wrote a, a letter to the home office. While my application was pending, I actually wrote a letter to the home office threatening the home office that should you ever change me from where I live, where I'm living right now with my daughter, you are breaking United Reg uh, Nations regulations, you know, <laughs> or, or stabilizing families, you know. I, I did many, I, not only one letter, I wrote several letters quoting different uh, pieces of legislation, you know. So I was now convinced that I'm not going to be moved. But I did this one thing that unless God has a purpose, mm -hmm. I'm I'm not trying to say I'm spiritual, but I'm just giving an example of, you know, an experience of what I've experienced myself. Amen. And for sure, my brother, my sister, you know, the day, you know, they, they, they sent a van to come and pick me and my, 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 my wife and my, my, my daughter and my son. We didn't know where they were going to take us to. They didn't even tell us. They just say, you know, pack your bags, you know, are you ready? We got in there and, you know, uh, we're just looking through the windows. You know, it was a van with the back of the van looking where this car was going. This van was taking us to, and we ended up in a town that I didn't even know of. That's when I resigned. I said, Lord, this is confirmation that you've got a purpose for me here. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what? I lived in that town to find the purpose of God. So determined that one time, you know, or not only one time, many days I would just leave the house and I say, and I'll say, Lord, I'm just going to go into the town center and just greet the first person that I greet. I want to tell them about the name, about the, the word of Jesus. Uh -huh. about, I remember I, I got into the high street and, and just met someone. One of them says, um, um, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Can I have your number? You know, this and that, you know. And the man just gave me his number. 
Mm. Away and I invited him to my house and he came to the house. But that's when, hallelujah, later on, God moved me from that little area, same, same area. And that's when I met uh, Sister Talent and her sister, uh, Sister Pajga. And then that's, they, they received the, the message of the hour and Amen. they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. At least I was satisfied. Mm. Mm. And in every way, my brother, my sister, God has a purpose for you. Whether it work, hallelujah. But you know what? Many times God trying to show us, but because we are not in that relationship with the Father, we are looking at how much money I'm paid. We are worried about the boss and the people that don't like you. Those are the people that we become so much aware of. Mm. Away, being aware of what God's purpose is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The people don't resist you, the people that avoid you, okay? The racism in the world, we become so conscious of that more than being cautious of God's purpose. And you see what happened. Later on, Sister Talent and Brother Fungai, we you know, came to Nottingham, and from Brother Fungai and Sister Talent, Brother Fungai testified to Sister Macheka. Sister Macheka brought a daughter, and the daughter was baptized, and the Sister Macheka brought a, 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 a husband, and then after a husband, the son. And then after that, you know, Fungai testified to Sister Irene. After Sister Irene testified to Sister uh, to, 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 to Sister um, um, uh, Charmaine, all those people came as a result of that one move to Rochdale. Amen. Okay. Amen. The plan of God, hallelujah, goes far away. But are we willing Amen. to be in that relationship where we can submit, where it doesn't look glorious, but we are satisfied that we are in the will of the Father? Amen. Because at times we move, but what our eyes, what our eyes you know, show us, what we see, what benefits us, but how did I ever knew, hallelujah, with all that fighting, hallelujah, that I'll be in Nottingham, hallelujah, and we'll baptize Charmaine, we'll baptize, you know, um, um, Irene, is the Macheka, Farai, Brother Macheka, all these people, hallelujah. Amen. But yet I was obsessed that I should not move, you know, my daughter from that school. Amen. I'm just giving an example. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me just finish now. You know. uh, verse 6. Uh, this five says in John chapter 70, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Do you know also, amen, hallelujah, that there is a glory that you had with the Father before the world was? Amen. I have finished, I have manifested thy name unto the man which thou gavest me out of the world. Mm. There are people, my brother, my sister, that you also are appointed to influence. Hallelujah. I'm not just talking about witnessing and testifying. No, 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 no. There are people, hallelujah, that should you remain in the will of the Father, doing and being in your right place, in your right position, ordained as a daughter and as a child of God, in your rightful place, you are more able to influence more people than those whom we are going to try to influence out of impersonation, out of your own desire. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He says, hallelujah, amen. The man thou gavest me, amen, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. <laughs> For, I, you know, when people can look at you and cannot see that you are able, but everything that you have is as a result of the God that you worship. This now underlines the difference between most Pentecostal preachers. Amen. And Brother Brenham. Because when you can look at Brother Brenham, you listen to his messages. You don't say, wow, that was powerful. That was a real good power, you know, punchline. You don't, you feel drawn closer to God because Brother Brenham he had nothing to offer. Amen. He didn't have anything to reveal. But why do we want to present ourselves as if you, we've got something to offer? Hmm. We want to be counted among others. Why do we do that? Amen. Jesus, the Son of God, was never like that. And if we are children of God, we should never be like that. Amen. 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 Oh, may God have mercy. So, which means, hallelujah, he says, uh, and you find that even now, even in, in the message, we have preachers that, are, that try to be like that as well. You know, it, 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 it's the Pentecostal, you know, spirits, amen. 
uh, uh, here it says on verse 7, Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. There is nothing that I should say is of my own. It's of my own ability. No, 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 no. <clears throat> but some of us, you know, we want to be known that we, we dress the best or we, buy, we drive the best car. Amen. Should I ever buy a beautiful bicycle, I make sure that before I leave church, every brother in the church has seen <laughs> my car, has seen my bicycle. You know, <laughs> I, I don't understand. It's become of people. <laughs> we make it a point. We spend more time on the mirror preparing for service than on the Bible, than in prayer. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. Let me. I, don't worry. I'm going to finish in a bit. <laughs> this eight. Now. This eight. I have given unto them the words which thou hast given me, <laughs> and they've received them, and they've known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. Oh, my brother, my sister, amen. amen. It doesn't mean that we don't have desires. We have desires. We have aspirations. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. But above all, amen, let the will of the Lord prevail. If we are amen. Amen. like the Son of God, if we are indeed the children of God, he says, verse 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine. And thine are mine. <laughs> Amen. Is everything of yours? Does it also belong to God? Mm. Does your time also belong to God? Amen. Amen. Do your children also belong to God? Amen, amen. Does your wife also belong to God? Hey, that's, don't even touch that area. <laughs> that, don't touch that area. Amen. We have situations, hallelujah, where people, you know, people prefer that, you know, I am the pastor of my own home, amen, and the, a, a Pastor Andrew can only pastor my wife through me. <laughs> amen. Then therefore, you know, if my wife has a dream, amen, she must speak to me, okay? And then, you know, I'll speak to Brother Andrew. If Brother Andrew has got a question, he asks me, you know, so what happened in the dream? And then, you know, I'll, I'll ask my wife, you know what? Oh, I've never understood that. But that's besides the point. Does your job also belong to God? Does your money belong to God? Amen, amen, amen. Do all you, brother, if your money, your job, hallelujah, your affairs and your concerns belong to God, guess what? Your worries belong to God also. Amen. Amen. Oh my. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm no longer afraid. Hallelujah. It's the Lord. Hallelujah. All my worries, I leave them to God. Because everything. So don't, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, cherry pick. What belongs to God and what should not belong to God. If everything that I have, amen, belong to God. Therefore, amen, I am not afraid. As David says, hallelujah, you know, I, hallelujah, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Hallelujah. Because I am in this relationship, amen. Amen. That all that is mine belongs to God. Amen. If Jesus was able to surrender, why do we hold on to certain things? Should my job ever, or should Christianity interfere with my job, I better put Christianity away. Mm. Or put Christianity on pause. Mm. Should my interest and my ambitions be affected by my religion, I put my religion on pause. That's not... Hallelujah. How Jesus Christ viewed his relationship with the Father. Amen. All right. Verse 10. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world. Jesus Christ recognizes that very well. Amen. That he is no longer in the world, but you and me, as children, as sons and daughters of God, we are still in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thy name those whom thou hast given me, 
that they may be one as we are. Who, 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 who? When Jesus was one with the Father, hallelujah, Jesus that they also may be one, hallelujah. With Amen. We need to be one with the Father, Amen. Amen. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those thou, thou givest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture may be fulfilled. Mm. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou should keep them from the evil. Mm. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. The way Jesus he had achieved his sonship here on earth, hallelujah, he is now praying that that relationship be accomplished in you and me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Verse 19. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That is referring to you now. God is now, Jesus was praying for you. Amen. He was praying for me. Them that shall believe that they all may be one as thou art is thou, Father, art in me, and the I in them, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. I really love John chapter 17. Amen. Amen. Now, as I um, just read two quotations, um, um, I hope I'm still within time. Um, All is well. Two quotations. Then we'll uh, close in a word of prayer. In the book of, uh, I think it's a quotation that I that I had in mind. But, um, so here we are. Uh, in a message, here, Brother Brenham talking about you know why Pentecost failed. Mm. He says uh, in the book uh, Desperation. Pentecost, there is where you failed. You thought because you were born of the Spirit, born of the Spirit of God, the birthright, that settled it. I hope and pray that there isn't many of us who are satisfied that we are now in the message. Uh -huh. People that are satisfied that, you know, um, our, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm saying that I'm born again. I'm satisfied that I'm in the church. <laughs> It's a shame. Some of us, you know, they are having his marriage. They are just satisfied that they are married in the message. But there's something that God is looking for, that relationship. Okay. Pentecost, it says that that settled it, but it only starts. You remember in the message, ye ye him. Brother Brennan preached that message, ye ye him, several times talking about adoption. I think he must have about over 17 times Brother Brennan preached that message and he used other titles, but he still bring back, you know, that uh, scripture in Matthew 17, talking about Jesus Christ, you know, showing him as, as, an adopted, uh, as an adopted son. How that the child, after it was born in the family, become a son. Some of us have found the message as a message and as a, as a religion and a faith that is better than the Pentecostals. Therefore, oh, finally I've arrived. I'm happy that I'm secure. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. That was just the beginning. Amen. It doesn't matter how many miracles. It doesn't matter how many signs. It doesn't matter how many confirmations. It doesn't matter how many relationships you might establish, hallelujah, with other people in the message of the hour. The most one important thing is that relationship with the father. Amen. How that a child after it was born in the family become a son. It had the rights to the birthright, but it had to be proven, child trained. To me, my brother, that is the purpose why we are here on earth. Mm. 
Mm. We therefore, once we understand that, we don't spend our time worrying and in fear, hallelujah, trying to do something to impress God, to please God, you know, so that we are not left in the rapture. No, no, no. It's about a relationship that has got to be accomplished. And Brother Brenham lived a life of maturity as the first mature son. Yeah, hallelujah, to the Gentile bride, to the bride of Christ. Amen. And look at his relationship with God. Mm. Is even if I get to know that I'm going to go to hell, I will love him anyhow. Mm. That's okay. Brother Brennan, amen. The message that he brought, amen. It, it came to help us and to build us as individuals so that we cannot just escape the case and the rest of that is to come. No, 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 no. If you came and you are satisfied that, oh, finally, behold, I'll send you Elijah, let's come and smite with the earth with the case. Oh, my, I escaped that case because I'm now in the message, my brother, my sister. The question still remains, amen. Mm. Are you a daughter of God? Are you a child of God? Mm. What are you doing to live a life that is worthy of this gospel? Mm. You measure yourself. What do you prioritize in your life from the beginning of the day to the end? What preoccupies your thinking, your mentality? What influences your relationship with other people? Do you love them because they love you? Do you do good to them because they do good to you? What if yeah, they've said bad about you? What would be your attitude? Will your attitude be governed by your relationship with the Father? Oh, may God have mercy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, oh, hallelujah. The prophet says there, amen. But um, I think for the sake of our time, um, I am going to leave it there. God richly bless you. Amen. Uh, I hope and pray in the name of our Lord and Savior that uh, someone would benefit from the things that we have spoken. Uh, that, you know, you be provoked in your own way. You know your relationship. When you, we talk about these mess messages like this now, it's uh, about, it brings you to a time where you need to reflect individually. You cannot cheat anybody. You know where your relationship with the, with the father is. You cannot deceive anybody. You cannot, uh, you know, um, uh, cheat anybody. You yourself know exactly from, day, from week to week. Amen. Hallelujah. Where your relationship is with the Father. We must hunger in the test issue of God. And the more we realize and we experience that relationship, I am convinced and I have experienced it. And I know it says in the scripture, many, many doors that are shut begin mm. to open up. The things that we worry about, the things that concern us, who no longer concern us anymore. Hallelujah. Because we are focused, hallelujah, on what pleases the Father. The things of this world, they come and go. Hallelujah. Amen. And as time ticks, amen, and as years roll, hallelujah, by, don't be found wasting time pursuing things that do not profit. Things, hallelujah, that are not heavenly. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you, brothers and sisters. God bless you, the saints in Nottingham. God bless you, the saints in Dublin. And God surely bless Brother Andrew. God bless all of us. Amen. Amen. Close in a word of prayer. Amen. Yeah. Brother Andrew, shall you just close for us in a word of prayer? Amen. Amen. Father, how we thank you for your grace, Lord. Even as has been read today, that what a privilege, Lord, how can we even understand fully this blessing that we should be called now the sons of God. Amen. Father, Lord, it's such a wonderful thing. Lord, we're so glad that you are shepherd. And Amen. Lord, we just want to know you in a deeper way. And Father, we're so glad that you are our Father. And Lord, Amen. Lord, we'd give up silver and gold. We'd give up fame and fortune just for a deeper Amen. realization and experience of that, Lord. Amen. Guide us in that. Surely that is Amen. why you have revealed yourself through the seals in this age. Amen. To reveal who we are in you, to reveal who you are to us. Father, bless your servant, Lord, upon this day. Thank you, Lord, that he's yielded himself unto you, Amen. that you've led him and you've guided him. Father, that you've spoken unto us. Amen. Father, let your word now, Father, overshadow each and every heart, each and every soul, Amen. each and every life. Father, trusting that you'll pass even now through each home, each head that is bowed. Father, and Lord, stir up the deep inside of your sons and daughters, Lord. 
for a deeper revelation of yourself. For to know you is life. Father, so bless us, Lord, we pray. Forgive us for our sins, Lord. Forgive us for our trespasses. Amen. Forgive us for our fears Amen. and our, our doubts, Lord. Forgive us for the times we take things into our own hands, Lord. Amen. For surely the only place we find perfect rest is in you. Father, has taken your yoke upon us, Lord. Amen. And if there's anybody out there today that doesn't know you, Father, even now as they lift up their hand and their heart to you, even as you persuade, even as you overshadow and woo them upon this day, May they just make that one glorious decision, Father Lord, to just open up that door, just to surrender it to you, just accept you for what you are. And Father, the work of restoration will start even then. Bless each of the saints in Nottingham. I do pray your special blessing upon them. Pray, Lord, for the visitors, Lord, upon this day that have visited us from different places. Bless them as well. Pray for our musicians. Thank you for them, Lord. Thank you for all that have participated this day. Bless the saints in Dublin. Lord, bless the saints scattered around here and there, Lord. And Father, continue to lead us and guide us. Bless this week. Lord, you be glorified in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. God bless you, believer. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Well, George, if you could lead us in a song there, please, bro.
Just to say something at the end of the service, I really was blessed and thank you so much to Pastor Marange for his faithfulness in the word. Amen. It was a great blessing to those who had joined uh, our Bible study on Thursday. It was quite an incredible Hallelujah. service today because our thought at our Bible study, our little Bible study with Amen. Carl on Thursday was our Father. We looked at the Lord's Prayer and our thought was Abba Father. So it was really quite incredible. And on Thursday, we looked at the three times in the scripture where the Bible speaks of Abba Father. So I thought it was an amazing thing today that the Lord just continued on down the same thought. So friends, there's two fundamental deeps inside of the human soul. One is to have a shepherd, to have protection and guidance and leadership. And the other one is to have a father. And those are the two things that Christ died for and that the Holy Ghost has come for to restore those relationships in us. And I'm sure that's the deep inside of you and the Lord's ministered us along yeah. the way. In this day. So we do thank the Lord for the word and thank you saints who have joined. We do have brother David Nash preaching for us from Oregon on Friday evening. I've invited Pastor Marange, if you'd like to join with the saints in Nottingham, please, you're more than welcome. He's a real wonderful preacher. I know he's preached in Nottingham before, Brother David. He preached for us a few weeks back. So if Pastor Marange would desire that, please feel free to join in on Friday. I think it will be a wonderful service. And may the Lord richly bless each and every one this week. Let's hand back to Brother George, maybe just one or two more songs. And God bless you, saints. Amen.